hello family it's african Esquire, and i'm here with a new video what i'm going to talk about today is the tragic slaying of a young 18 year old girl named nia wilson so apparently what happened is a young girl this past weekend was on the, a train in um, oakland california and she was on a train with her sisters now what happened was there's a woman who was trying to get off the train with a stroller and the young girl was trying to help her with the stroller while she was helping her a 27 year old white male walks up to her and slits her throat and this is an 18 year old girl that was murdered um, her sister also was stabbed in the attack a lot of people are talking about this a lot of people are upset and you know first we have to say just rest in peace to this young 18 year old girl Nia Wilson they said she had a job interview scheduled for the next day that she was excited to go to they said she had dreams of being a makeup artist um, it just seemed like she was supposed to be such a sweet young girl who actually had plans for her life just like all of us who are taken inside of these brutal acts of murder so we have to say rest in peace to her and just pray for comfort for her family and for her friends but a lot of people are triggered by this because of how random the attack was i mean this was just on a train any of us who have ever been on a train i used to take the train all the time in different places um you're on your alone a lot of time a lot of times and any you're susceptible to any attacks really when you're on the platform i'm always looking around because you never know if someone will be crazy enough to push you off or off the train platform onto the tracks you always have to be aware of yourself when you're in these situations but to know that even if you're just sitting on a train someone could walk up and slit your throat or someone would be willing to do that in spite of there being witnesses because this is not something that could be preventable where you have cameras or something because this guy did it in front of a whole slew of people and he still was willing to murder this young girl and so that brings the question of okay when are, when are our children actually going to be safe in this country when are we going to be able to rest assured that our children are fine a lot of people were we're, we're feeling those feelings that our ancestors have felt in the civil rights movement the feeling that there's nowhere safe you can't be safe at a church because you could get bombed at a church you can't be safe at a mosque because you could be shot up at, an, at a mosque you can't be safe anywhere you can't be safe in your own home and my answer to that is it's not something that is new honestly and we have to start conditioning ourselves to understand that as long as the system of white supremacy the system of institutional racism it still exists in America we are always going to be susceptible to these attacks now I've talked many times about the differences between individual racism and systematic racism but the most important difference that must be remembered is that individual racism is honestly a result of systematic racism so when you look at history systematic racism preceded all individual racism meaning whenever the European decided that they wanted to go into Africa and to start Make it, taking slaves and taking them to America whenever they decide they wanted to go and colonize Africa before they ever had hatred for African people they had that that uh, desire to actually obtain the African resources to use the people to use their labor so there was always a thought of exploiting before there was a thought of hating the thought of hating came after the thought of exploiting because at, at the end of the day if you're trying to get your population to back you up when it comes to saying we're going to do these horrible acts of inhumanity on these people who have done nothing to you you have to find some type of ideological ide, ide, ideology to back you up some type of um some type of mindset to help your population feel at ease with the fact that you're doing these horrible acts to these people and that's what the ideas of white supremacy really came from it didn't come from one day when a european said oh i'm going to hate africans today it really came as a way to support the system of white supremacy and allow for europeans to go and do things inside of the world that were horrible to people who are of african descent so if we understand that we have to understand that as long as the system exists then the ideology will always exist and so there's no safe place in America as long as this system exists as long as we have a system where uh, black men could be over incarcerated at alarming rates as long as we have a system where black children are susceptible to miseducation they're not being educated to be competitive they're being educated to be servicemen to be serving um, white children as long as we have a system where the police are allowed to go out and commit executions on human beings and these are tax paying human beings but these people who are supposed to be protecting and serving your communities they are acting as judge 
strategy and executioner on your people as long as we have that system existing there's always going to be these people who pop up and they might seem like they're fringe um, elements of something but they're actually uh, they actually subscribe to the thoughts and the, and the insecurities of living inside of a white supremacist system now I, I thought it was really interesting when Marcus Garvey he did a meeting with a KKK member and what he found was that the KKK, um, he actually, the Grand Wizard of the KKK, he did a meeting with them, and it was very controversial when he did this at this time. But what the Grand Wizard told him is that white, all white people might not tell you this, but we honestly represent the interest of white people. We, uh, we, uh, we represent the interest of this whole system existing because what we're saying is that we want for the white person to be dominant in his own land. We want for the white person to be first and really the African person, you can either be subjected to us or you can leave. That was the common feelings at that time and so there's a lot of that feelings today. People might not say it. They might not say that this is the feeling that we want you to be subjugated to us but if those people are not uncomfortable with the things that are happening in this world at the hands of white supremacy if those people are not uncomfortable with institutional racism if they're not uncomfortable with these things then the fact is that they do to some level support that institution still continuing so understand that these white supremacists these fringe elements that was what they're called um they actually are not fringe they're directly related to the political atmosphere and it, it's not just trump i hear that all the time like oh it's because of Trump came and now all these people came out and, you know, um, they feel more comfortable to do these things. I mean, you, th there's a well documented history of people doing horrible things, even when there was Bill Clinton in office or Obama in office. If you remember Kenneth um, Johnson, the young child that was wrapped up inside of a mat inside of or he was killed brutally and wrapped up inside of a gym mat if you remember james bird the black man who was chained to a truck and driven miles and miles until his whole body basically fell apart and his head was de decapitated um there are there's a long documented history of these things happening so it's not just something that trump started these things have been happening i'm not saying that trump doesn't um encourage the racism but he certainly isn't the root of it these things were happening even when obama was in office these things were happening when clinton was in office when bush was in office these things have always been happening so the answer is not to say well the answer is we have to get trump out of office therefore if we get trump out of office then we'll be able to reinstitute um, the correct social ideals no the answer is to say that this system where people feel like they could be on top and other people be on the bottom this even though that a lot of those um trump supporters aren't the biggest beneficiaries of this system because most times they're actually the poor white folk um but the fact that the system exists where it's supposed to be normalized in our minds that black people will be subjected to the racist policies of white people there's always going to be people who create philosophies and create ideologies who are going to try to um, reinforce that system existing and try to um justify that system existing so this is will always be the case so unfortunately until we get this we're going to always be subjected to these things we're going to have to look over our shoulders because until we get that this that the whole institutional racist system has to come to an end then we are basically sitting here at the grace of god really because well we're always at the grace of god but our what i mean by that is that our peace in this country our um are, are not being subjected to violence. It's, it's going to always be prevalent inside of this type of systematic atmosphere. So that is all I have about this. Again, rest in peace to Nia Wilson and um, uh, just pray for her family and pray for her friends um, and look up this girl, so, you know, read some information about her. Just don't let her name go in vain. And certainly, black people, make sure you're out here being aware. Make sure you're out here um, you know protecting yourself and don't assume that anyone is not there just to get on a train it's just just understand that there are some people who have no other reason to hate you other than the color of your skin so that's all i have and i will see you on another video